Obviously, there's something missing at the beginning of our passage today. We begin, we begin by hearing Peter saying to the crowds, why does this surprise you? And we're left wondering, what is the this that he's talking about? Peter goes on to talk about how this demonstrates the power of God in bringing Jesus back from the dead, but we still are wondering, what is the this? So we need to back up earlier in the passage to what I think of as the story part of the story, where the action takes place. The part of the story that comes before is so crucial to our understanding of what's going on. Peter and John were walking towards the temple, and as they walked along, there was a man being carried to the temple to his regular begging spot. When he saw Peter and John, he asked them for money. Peter and John stopped and said to him, Silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man got up and walked. That's the beginning of the story. And then we read in the Acts of the Apostles, the continuing part where uh, Peter and John talk to the people about the role that God had in the redemption of their lives through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So that reminds me of something that happened to me many years ago. Many years ago when I was a young theological student and was so sure that I knew everything there was to know about the scripture, I was assisting at a church. And on the Sunday morning, just before the service began, there was a man who came to the entrance of the church but the greeters at the door weren't going to let him in, and this disturbed me. So I came and kind of elbowed them aside. <laughs> they were maybe uh, twice or three times my age, but whatever. And I said to the man, what do you want? And he said, I, I want something to eat. And I said, I'll look after you in my condescending superior way. So I uh, decided that I would leave the church service and take the man along the road for something to eat. So we walked out of the church door and walked along the road. And as we were going, a police car pulled up and stopped suddenly. The officers jumped out and came up to me and asked me, asked me if I was okay. Obviously the man next to me was the one in need, but then they told me that this man was known to be dangerous. So we carried on our way and we came to a restaurant and when we got to the restaurant, we went inside and I sat down with the man and bought him a meal. The proprietor was only going to let him have his meal provided I stay with him. So we sat and he ate. When he finished his meal, I felt like I had done everything that I thought I could do with him and so I wished him well and he said he wanted to thank me and took my hand to shake my hand and then he got ready to punch me. Well, he'd been eating pork chops. This was a greasy spoon. He was eating pork chops and his hands were all greasy. So I was able to slip out quite easily and back away and then wave and smile and find my way in a securitous route back to the church. I was conflicted after that. So later that week, when I came to a Christian meeting that we were involved in with some other folks, I talked to a good friend, Trevor. Trevor was a good twice my age, someone I looked up to, a very wise and uh, devout Christian. And I said to him, Trevor, what can you do with a person like that? I had no idea how I could help him. And Trevor said to me, that's where the Lord found me, brother. And then he told me some of his backstory of his life, how he'd been in Calcutta on Skid Row. He was an ex-boxer, an ex-boxer, a tough guy, but he was now living on the street in destitution, uh, contemplating his own end. And along came a man named Errol who said to him, God loves you. And Trevor said to him, listen, you don't know who you're talking to. Errol took him home, cleaned him up, gave him money to get his clothes out of the pawn shop, 
took him to a street corner in Calcutta where there was at that time a revival meeting going on and Trevor that night was gloriously transformed he was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit as Trevor said to me when the prodigal son comes home he comes home hungry and then we come to our gospel reading for today and it's the same thing the gospel reading starts part way through the story it is where Two of the disciples are telling the others what had just happened. We have to back up a little bit and find out what the rest of the story is. And again, it's about people walking along the road. The earlier part of the story is that two disciples were walking along the road after the resurrection of Jesus, but before they knew about the resurrection of Jesus. And their hearts were heavy as they discussed all of these things that had gone on. And as they walked along, Jesus fell in step beside them and asked them what they were talking about. And they told him. And so he explained to them from the scriptures how it was that the Messiah was to come and to suffer and to die at the hands of violent people and be raised again on the third day. When they got to where they were going, they stopped as if they were going to go into the place and Jesus appeared to be continuing on his way. And they said, come on in and uh, stop with us for a while. Jesus went in with them and they sat down to have a meal together. Jesus took the bread and broke it. And in the breaking of the bread, they recognized him. And then immediately he was gone from their sight. And they turned to one another and they said, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us as we walked along the road? So they left the house and they ran all the way back to Jerusalem from where they'd come. And when they got there, they entered into the room where the other disciples were. And then our story continues as it is in the gospel for today. And then as they were telling that story and the other disciples were saying, yeah, we've heard it too. And Jesus has even appeared to Simon. Somehow they forgot to mention that Jesus had also appeared to the women, but that's another story. And then Jesus came and stood amongst them and he showed them his hands and his side and he even ate some broiled fish that they had on hand to show them that he really was alive. He wasn't a ghost. And in seeing him and hearing him speak and in touching him, they believed that he was indeed raised from the dead and that he was really there with them. Now I think about all those things and I think about our role in bringing faith to other people. How can we bring the good news of the gospel to someone else? How can we share with them this wonderful news that we have within ourselves? I believe we have a difficult time in sharing that if we begin with the end of the story instead of the beginning of the story. If we tell people only that now we're happy or now we know the redemption of Jesus, or now we know how great it is that God has saved us. If we just begin there, we leave out a critical and important element, and that is how God has come to us. Like the story that Trevor told me about his own life, it was one thing to see him as a blessed saint of God, for indeed he was, as someone who divulged information to the rest of us about the good news of how um, God can change our lives. But there was a note of authenticity to it, which was strengthened when I found out when he told me what his own backstory was. And maybe sometimes when we're sharing with others, we need to let them get inside of us to know who we are let them see who we are. Let them see what God has done for us in the path. Not just our rejoicing now, but let others see a part of our journey. Let them share a part of our journey. Well, 25 or so years later, after Trevor had told me his story from 10 or 15 years before that, I was sitting at a conference of supervisors and students. My student days were in the past. I was now a supervisor. 
We went around the circle and introduced ourselves to everyone else, and when the person two chairs to the right of me introduced his supervisor who was sitting beside me, he introduced him as Errol, and right away I recognized the name of the man who had been instrumental in Trevor's ta transformation. I did a quick turn so fast I nearly sprained my neck, and talked to him for briefly, everybody else was wondering what's going on, and found out he indeed was the man who had shared part of Trevor's story. This showed me how small the world is in God's hands, how as we journey along our road in life, there are lots of people we touch, that we speak to, and we may not know the repercussions of what they have to say. And Trevor's story had changed my life, and he was in some ways the grandfather of that transformation in me, because he had touched Trevor, and Trevor had touched me. And now, all these many years later, I got to meet a man who was half a world away from where he had done those things which were so pivotal in Trevor's life. You never know, as you walk along your journey in life, you never know how you're going to be uh, instrumental in transforming the lives of others. But always be courageous. Always be ready, as we read in the scriptures, always be ready to give an account for the hope that lies within us. Always be ready to share your story, because your story can make a difference in the life of someone else. God bless you as you look within yourself and find a story that you can share someday side by side on a road, right now over the phone or by Zoom or maybe masked six feet apart. But find ways that you can let others know of the joy that's within you, not just the joy, but the reason for the joy that God has given you. Amen.